What's up, witches? It's the Zen Witch here with another unboxing. Can you tell it's rainy and really humid and that I've been out in it? <laughs> For a couple of seconds there, I tried to make it look good and then I thought, why waste the energy? <laughs> and Pi is not here with me right now because him's taking a nap, so I apologize. But he will be in on every video I can get him in on, guaranteed. So today's unboxing is this, the other half of those um, strange decks, the Creative Whack Pack. This is the Innovative Whack Pack, the Innovative, in, Innovative, Innovative <laughs> Whack Pack. And if I have any viewers in the UK, I apologize for my horrible accents, but you know, watching 20 seasons of Time Team <laughs> will do it to you. Anyhow, the Innovative Whack Pack by Roger Van Oak. 60 Creative Strategies to Provoke and Inspire Your Thinking. Roger Van Oak's presentations have enriched the creativity of millions around the world. He's the author of the best-selling creativity books, A Whack on the Side of the Head and A Kick in the Seat of the Pants, and also the popular Creative Whack Pack. Roger Van Oak has won a loyal following around the country. That's a quote from Business Week. Looking for creative inspiration? Try consulting the Innovative Whack Pack. This worthy companion to the Creative Whack Pack will fire your imagination. Each card in the deck packs a two-sided creative punch. One side has provocative insight about innovation from Heraclitus, the world's first creativity teacher. These 2,500-year-old ideas, such as you can't step into the same river twice and dogs bark at what they don't understand, will give you a fresh perspective. The other side contains a creativity strategy inspired by each insight. Roger Van Oak enriches these strategies with amusing anecdotes and intriguing questions that will whack you out of old thought patterns. The result is a treasury of 60 creativity strategies that include appreciate turbulence, ask a fool, see the obvious, and reverse assumptions. And this is a 2003 copyright from U.S. Games. This is kind of an easy deck to review because it's there's no book. No book. All the information is on the cards on both sides. So um, let's see. The We've got two, four. This is what stands in for a book. So here's the back. Same as on the box. And then we have um, a little blurb about Heraclitus. So let's go through these first. Heraclitus of Ephesus, uh, around... 500 BC was the most provocative of the ancient Greek philosophers. His ideas about life, nature, and the cosmos were known throughout the ancient world, and even today, 2,500 years later, they retain their freshness, relevance, and yes, the power to stir our minds. Over the centuries, he's earned nicknames such as the Riddler and the Enigmatic One. Indeed, his use of metaphor and paradox makes him sound more like a poet or religious prophet than a philosopher. His style, similar to a Zen teacher's paradoxical koan, or a Delphic Oracle's ambiguous prophecy is designed to whack us out of our habitual thought patterns so that we can look at what we're doing in a fresh way. All that remains of his thought are 125 epigrams. I've selected 30 of these insights that I feel best express Heraclitus' philosophy of the creative spirit. But there's 60 cards, let's see. Making sense of his enigmatic ideas can be challenging. Thus, it's best to think of each insight as a creativity exercise that we have to solve in order to unlock its meaning. To do this, we need to be imaginative and metaphorical, but once we've done so, we're well rewarded with a creative strategy. Okay, and there's about Roger Van Oak, Phi Beta Kappa graduate from Ohio State. O-H! Okay, um, earned his PhD from Stanford in the history of ideas. So he's got some credentials about the cards in this deck. Each card has two sides, an insight and a strategy. The insight contains an illustrated insight about innovation from the ancient philosopher Heraclitus. Now he says he's chosen 30 of these, but there's 60 cards. I'm disgruntled. I'm curious. Okay. Um, da da da. Illustrated the world's these include such provocative ideas as that which opposes produces a benefit 
and everything flows. Some of these make immediate sense. Others take a little more thought and imagination to grasp their full meaning. Try to come up with your own understanding for each insight. And right away, I'm thinking about, you know, the insight sides, if they are kind of enigmatic, would be a great, that would be the great side to use as an oracle. The strategy side consists of an interpretation of that insight by Roger Von Oak. This comes in the form of a creativity strategy. For example, an interpretation of that which opposes produces a benefit is the strategy appreciate your problem. This is followed by a story that illustrates this strategy. Finally, there are some questions to help you apply the strategy to your own situation. There are 30 insights and two interpretations for each, which means there are 60 cards, each bearing a creative strategy. Okay, 30 insights, two interpretations for each. Thank you for answering that and making me not go any crazier than I am. Play with this deck on a regular basis. Not only will it provoke original thoughts, it will also become a wise companion whose guidance you will welcome. Okay, use this deck as an oracle. Think of a specific question. Uh, what do I need to focus on to be more innovative in my current situation? And second, uh, need an answer that addresses your question. Shuffle the deck and select a card. Third, how does this card's message relate to your question? Try to think of as many contexts as possible in which the message makes sense. So he already is a master of the reframe. That's what these decks are all about. And, you know, you've heard me talk about neurolinguistic programming, NLP. And one of the key uh, tools in that NLP kit is the reframe, looking at something differently. And that's exactly what the Creative Whack Pack does, and that's exactly what this does. So when you're in that place of how does this fit my question, you are in a, in a wonderful place as far as growing your brain and finding new creative solutions when you when you let go of the known and you get stopped in that place of how the hell does this work how does this match up with my question you can kind of go blank and that's when the intuitive stuff really comes out and the psychic stuff comes through so you've watched it happen many times i'm sure if you've been watching my channel all right let's go through the cards so that's the strategy side. All of my alarms are going off. Okay. Insight, my phone alarm, not my psychic alarms. Okay, so here's, I'm just going to look at the insight sides. Maybe we'll pick the first one. And, um, oh, looky here. So I've got them in reverse order. It's okay. We can work with that. So in card number one, the cosmos speaks in patterns. Here's what I'll do. The cosmos speaks in patterns, and then the strategy is discover a pattern. The cosmos speaks in patterns. Look from the outside in. Okay, so here we have pairs. So cards one and two have the same insight, which is the cosmos speaks in patterns, and the strategies discover a pattern and look from the outside in. Um, what pattern and on the bottom of the strategy side is a little um, statement in blue or a question here what patterns might you discover if you viewed your situation from the outside in so sweet I'm, I'm liking this all right let me see how I yeah let's do it that way expect the unexpected or you won't find it so there are pictures. I'm not going to concentrate too much on those. And then expect the unexpected or you won't find it. So we have be willing to be led astray and prepare for the unintended. Prepare for the unintended. That really makes you think about the ecology of what you're doing, about the consequences of it, and what might come from that, which helps you to make decisions better, to hone in on a more specific decision um, and something that is more likely to bring you the outcome you're looking for, right? Okay, next two, we have find, or we have everything flows. Then we have find the flow and sense what's next. Sorry, there was a call I had to take. So seven and eight, the insight is you can't step into the same river twice. Strategy, escape from obsolete ideas and see how you're changed. We have that which opposes produces a benefit, appreciate your problem, or go around. Um, 
A wonderful harmony is created when we join together the seemingly unconnected. Connect the unconnected, make a metaphor. So, I mean, do you see how this is going to stretch your thinking? And that's just a good thing anyway, you know, in general. Um, keeping your brain nice and plastic, keeping new synapses, you know, new, new neurons, making new connections. Um, always a good plan. If all things turn to smoke, the nose would become the discerning organ. Alter your strategy, ask what if. I'm going to look at the bottom of these. If your situation were greatly transformed, could you let go of the past and adopt new ways of thinking? There's the key. What unusual what if questions can you ask? What decisions would you make if you knew that you only had three months to live? There's a reframe for you. Okay. The sun will not exceed its limits because the avenging furies, ministers of justice, would find out. Let furies become muses. Make sure the furies are real. How can you turn the constraints of your situation to your advantage? Think judo, <laughs> using your opponent's momentum against them, using the circumstances of the situation to vault you into something new. And then what furies hold you in check? What havoc would be wrought if you changed something that seems unalterable? Are these furies real or imagined? This is weighty stuff. This is like some really big stuff that could help you. I can see why this guy's sold out a bunch of stuff. Lovers of wisdom must open their minds to very many things. Be an explorer. Stay curious. I searched into myself. These are pretty cool images too. Like I said, I'm sort of ignoring these, but unlock your own answers. Find your creative style. Knowing many things doesn't teach insight. Knowing many things doesn't teach insight. Insight is to be able to see deeply into something and see patterns and connections. Yeah. Drop an assumption. Practice forgetting. <gasps> oh, what would happen if you forgot the obvious answers that come to mind and searched for new ones? Where can you use your forgettery? What assumptions can you drop in one? In what ways are you salting your experience before tasting it? Ooh, boy. Many fail to grasp what's right in the palm of their hand and the strategies see the obvious and see the wonder. When there is no sun, we can see the evening stars. This says ignore the sun, get away from the problem. So talking about a, a facet that might just be blinding you to all these other possibilities that are there. The most beautiful order is a heap of sweepings piled up at random. Find meaning in random ideas, find beauty in the mundane. And here's a random story for you that doesn't even really fit the cards, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. When um, we were in a homeschool group and the kids were little and went to visit one of the other families and um, they were getting ready to get carpet downstairs and they just had, you know, bare floors and, um, and lots of little kids like babies, toddlers and stuff. And... <laughs> She said when she picked out the carpet, um, they asked what color she wanted, and she, she went and swept up all the stuff underneath the dining room table and said, I want this color. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Things love to conceal their true nature. Look for the second right answer and be alert for deception. This is those who approach life like a child playing a game, moving and pushing pieces, Possess the power of kings. Play with it and have fun. Seawater is both pure and polluted. For fish, it's drinkable and life-giving. For humans, undrinkable and destructive. Change contexts. Discover what thrives. Ooh. On a circle, an end point can also be a beginning point. Reframe the situation. Spot the opportunity. What other words and concepts can you use to describe your situation? What action did you take today that marked the end of one era and the beginning of a new one? So there's the reframe. It is disease that makes health pleasant, hunger that makes fullness good, and weariness that makes rest sweet. Use darkness to shed light and ask a fool. What conventional wisdom can you challenge is the ask a fool thing. 
what's dark or missing in your current situation how does it shed light on what is there okay yeah this is just great stuff the doctor inflicts pain to cure suffering as my back goes thumpity thump from a shot this morning <laughs> reverse your approach see the opposite viewpoint the way up and the way down are one and the same rethink your strategy watch out for moreness where would you be better served with less rather than more? What problems might more create? <laughs> a thing rests by changing. Move on, back off are the two strategies. A thing rests by changing. Wow. The barley wine drink falls apart until it is stirred. Stir things up, appreciate turbulence. While we're awake, we share one universe, but in sleep, we each turn away to a world of our own. Listen to your dreams and wake up. Dogs bark at what they don't understand. Watch out for criticism. Muzzle your own barking dog. What in your current situation would benefit from a temporary cessation of criticism? What types of ideas do you bark at without ever really considering? That's awesome. Donkeys prefer garbage to gold. People value different things. Things change their value. Do you see how valuable these are? Every walking animal is driven to its purpose with a whack. Embrace failure. Disrupt success. What previously successful assumptions can you challenge? Success can make us complacent. We think everything's fine. Things are working. Why change them? So talking about questioning that. There, there's a limit to that too. <laughs> there's a greater need to extinguish arrogance than a than a blazing fire. You are not God. Beware of hubris. Amen. Your character is your destiny. Set your own course. Prophesy your own success. And the sun is new each day. Forgive. Think again. So excellent, excellent. All of these. And I haven't worked with this one. I've worked with the Creative Whack Pack a lot, but this one, not so much. So let's give them a shuffle. And this is U.S. Games from, you know, back in the early 2000s. So, of course, it shuffles very well. Like regular cards. All right. Then. Oops. As I make a dog's breakfast of it. Okay. Ancestors and allies, guides and guardians, please come be present. Bring your wisdom. Come meddle in the shuffling of this deck so that wonderful, insightful, appropriate answers and insights come out for my viewers. All right. Let, what can we ask about here? Let's ask about, okay, everybody's struggling with something right now. Not necessarily all the same thing. We certainly have some common struggles. But I want you to think about, and there's one, I want you to think about a particular personal struggle that you're having. And let's ask this deck to give us some insight and strategy into solving that problem and let's look at these okay see what flew out while i was continuing to shuffle things love to conceal their true nature and i searched into myself so this one is saying that it's time to take a, a new look at the problem see the strategy is be alert for deception so the question there is is it possible someone has disguised his intentions from you? What might they be? In what ways are you deceiving yourself? So just being on the alert for things being slightly off, that I'm not seeing things the way they're really presenting themselves to me. So self-deception can look um, in a lot of ways, you know, present in a lot of ways. Um, there's... Um, just flat out denial. I am absolutely refusing to see what's in front of me. There's misinterpretation. I think I, I, I'm seeing this and that's what I'm describing to myself, but that's not really what it is. So it's just kind of like removing some blinders and looking a little bit harder. 
um, questioning your own perception of it. Am I right about my perception? Um, all right, let's read this. Deception is an omnipresent part of life. Animals camouflage themselves for protection against predators, and predators disguise their intentions in order to trap their prey. In war... Military leaders feign weakness to lure an enemy into battle or fake strength to prevent an enemy attack. In sports, teams disguise one play as another in order to confuse their opponents. In politics and courtship, politicians and lovers hide character flaws. And in riddles, puzzlers de delude would-be solvers into making false assumptions. For example, how can you carry water in a sieve? What is raised in Italy during, what is raised in Italy during the rainy season? What has rivers but no water, cities but no buildings, and forests but no trees? And absolutely evilly, they don't give the answers to those riddles. Okay, what's raised in Italy during the rainy season? Uh, the water levels. For example, how can you carry water in a sieve? Uh, you line the sieve with something. What has rivers but no water? cities but no buildings and forests but no trees that one i don't know if you do comment and <laughs> put it down below is it possible that someone has disguised his intentions for okay so the first thing that we need to do is is clear our eyes which is kind of difficult because on a mercury retro we're particularly prone to misinterpreting mishearing misspeaking all right so that's one thing that we need to do I searched into myself. The other thing is to really look at your part in whatever you're struggling with, in whatever you're trying to surmount. What is my responsibility here? And only my responsibility, you know? Let's divide and, and say, you know, what's my responsibility? What particular gifts do I have? What are my strong points and how can I bring that to bear on the problem right now? Unlock your own answers. All of us have good ideas if we're willing to dig deeply enough within ourselves to find them. Sometimes, however, our own attitudes can prevent us from accessing these ideas. I call the attitudes that imprison our thinking mental locks. They include such beliefs as there is one right answer, always be practical, follow the rules, avoid ambiguity, that's not my area, and don't be foolish. These attitudes make sense in some situations, but they interfere when we're trying to be creative. One technique I use for opening mental locks is to do the opposite. That is, I try to look for more than one right answer, worry less about how correct I am, seek inspiration in outside areas, embrace paradox, and so on. What good ideas do you have waiting for expression? What mental locks keep you from gaining access to that? So another thing you can do is take, take your judgments about the situation you know, this is the way it is. And ask yourself, is that true? Is that really true? You know, really? And what if it, what if that's not true? That's a way to, another way to ask. What if that's really not true? And so, um, so, you know, you can really unlock the opposite and, and find out what you really know deep down inside. So I feel like I want to take one more. I'm going to cut. A wonderful harmony is created when we join together the seemingly unconnected. Make a metaphor. A powerful way to join ideas together is to make a metaphor. You can do this simply by recognizing similarities between unrelated phenomena. Indeed, this is how our thinking grows. We understand the unfamiliar by comparing it to what we know. The first auto automobiles were called horseless carriages. Early locomotives were dubbed iron horses. Metaphors can also give us a fresh insight into a problem. For example, here are three metaphors for life. One, life is like a jigsaw puzzle, but you don't have the picture on the front of the box as a guide. Sometimes you're not even sure if you have all the pieces. Two, life is like a bagel. <laughs> it's delicious when it's fresh and warm, but often it's just hard. The hole in the middle is its great mystery, and yet it wouldn't be a bagel without it. And three, life is like a poker game. You deal or are dealt to. You bet, chef, 
check, bluff, and raise. You learn from those you play with. Sometimes you win with a pair or lose with a full house. But whatever happens, it's best to keep shuffling along. What metaphors can you create? So that really lets you look at your own life and, you know, think about too, kind of like with a tarot deck or an oracle deck, how would you describe your struggle with the metaphors in that deck and how could that help you see it a little more clearly? So, um, I, I, I hope that you liked that. I'm looking at how very short this video is and then I just realized... <laughs> It's in two parts. Never mind. I had to I had to click out at one point and then so it uh, <laughs> never mind you guys. Oh Mercury Mercury, what fun you are. All right. I hope you enjoyed that and got something useful out of it. This is certainly an interesting deck for anybody that's creative, anybody that's an entrepreneur. Anybody that is, you know, setting up their own problems to solve in their lives, um, I think it's it's well worth having. Very interesting stuff going on. It's good to just read, you know, it's just kind of some reading material to open up your mind a little bit too. I hope that you're subscribed to my channel. Hit that button if you're not and the like button as well and the notification button. And if you want, you can hit the Patreon button below and support my work. You can hit the um, Discord and come join my Discord. I'm going to start scheduling some events as soon as November comes around and Mercury does too. Um, also, there's a wish list. If you would like a personal reading on a video, buy me a deck. I will read for you. Let me know in your, uh, in your little gift note what name you would like to be shouted out as. And you can look forward to your reading. And as soon as I get those decks, I shoot a video. So it's a pretty quick turnaround if you decide to do that for me. Thank you, everybody, for watching and hanging out with me every day. I'll see you tomorrow for another unboxing. And on Wednesday for a live stream. Until then, this is the Zen Witch. Blessed be.